all this is dr mubin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show there was a question that was asked many times and that was that once a vaccine is given to us and the messenger rna is inside a cell will it continue to make spike proteins and just continue to bombard our system to produce so many spike proteins that the immune system just becomes nuts just the same way like a, a sars cov 2 infection and result in the cytokine storm and result in the damage that we are seeing in some people or make us long haulers and so on. So the basic uh, fundamental part of the question is that will the messenger RNA continue to live on in the cell and continue to help make spike proteins and now we are in trouble. So I thought this is a very, very important question to answer. And so today's discussion is about how long a vaccine will continue to help us make the spike proteins and is that a controlled mechanism or not the the reason for me to bring it up at this time as well is that we have talked in detail in the last couple of talks about the way the cells produce the spike protein so i thought this is a good add on to complete the the discussion so hopefully we can um, we can have this discussion together Sort of a sad day here, but um, so if you see my expression a little sad, so please don't mind. All right, so this is drbean.com. And then here are all the, um, the, the links that are in the description as well, and just the important things that I am referring these things from. Um, somebody had criticized me from, for using uh, Wikipedia. I want to make sure that we are on the same page there. I have these books with me as well. And normally what I do is that I refer to the books where I feel that there is something that I need to clarify. Majority of this information is something that I have studied during my medicine time and after because I teach. So because of that, it is kind of a little less scary for me to be able to go to Wikipedia and, dis and find out what is right and what is not. Secondly, Wikipedia nowadays, uh, from ever, they have uh, references as well. And I usually look at the reference and go and look at the actual study as well. So uh, I would say that uh, when you are discussing things with me, it is possible that I have made an error in my presentation that is on me. But most of the time, when I look at the references, I try to make sure that the references are correct. Um, so there are some references here, uh, which I'll discuss in a second. This is a very important article about the messenger RNA, which the vaccine will produce. And then various parts of the messenger RNA that we'll talk about. These are here. And then finally, a uh, few more uh, articles about what happens to a messenger RNA once it is in our cytoplasm. So the fate of the messenger RNA. And then uh, this is another one which is important, and that is how many uh, amino acids are present in the spike protein. So spike protein is made up of many small peptides or protein molecules. So these individual peptides are called amino acids. So how many amino acids form a spike protein? So that is this uh, talk here, uh, article here. And then this is also important to keep in mind that how many ribosomes are present in a cell. And we will use all this information in our talk as well. So with this uh, um, introduction, let's start the talk. So here is what happens. We have seen this many times. Once the vaccine has been injected, the vaccine, so let's say this is a lipid nanoparticle, or this may be an adenovirus that is brought in by AstraZeneca. At the end of the day, both the adenovirus or the lipid nanoparticle are actually doing the same function. Their function is to bring the messenger RNA inside our cells. They are just different kind of vehicles to bring it in. So here, when the messenger RNA, the particle has arrived in the cell and the messenger RNA has become separated from it, then we know this, that that messenger RNA is, is fed into the ribosomes which are the great chefs in our cell. And there are 10 million ribosomes in one cell. 
So I wanted us to, and I have the descriptions for everything I'm saying here. Again, if I mistakenly speak incorrect, that is on me, but I have all this discussion with references. Uh, so there are about 10 million ribosomes and we'll use this information a little later. So please keep this in mind. The so RNA, messenger RNA is fed into a ribosome. Ribosome will then use that and create spike proteins from it. And that is the process of translation. And we know that from our talks yesterday and the day before yesterday, that the spike protein will then be fed into a shredder, which is called proteosome. And that would break it up into smaller pieces. And then that those smaller pieces will be loaded on major histocompatibility complexes type one or two or MHC type one or two. And that would then cause the immune system cells to become activated. We know that much. Now, today, what we are going to focus on is this part that what happens to this messenger RNA? Is it going to live in our cell forever? And is it going to just sit in there and keep getting fed into the uh, ribosome and continue to make more and more spike protein and continue to make the spike proteins available outside? Uh, so before I talk about that, one more thing over here, please remember that we have done this discussion that the spike proteins are presented on the cell surface and then the immune cells will then bind with this cell. And in many cases, they would kill this cell. So even if this cell that had the um, messenger RNA in it, if even if it wanted to be immortal and live forever, it cannot because our immune system is going to take care of this cell. And that is the cytotoxic T cells that would do it. In some cases, natural killer cells will do that as well. So this cell doesn't have a long life anyways. But now let's see what happens to the ribosome sorry, the, the messenger RNA. I think you would enjoy the discussion today. I spent a lot of time today to draw these diagrams. So this is a uh, structure of messenger RNA. So imagine we have zoomed in all the way and we can look at this little tiny microscopic structure or electron microscopic structure. And we are looking at what are the parts of it. Um, so Greg says that, why am I sad? Yes. Um, yes, uh, Greg. Um, of course, it was uh, political matters aside. It just did not look right. Hey, Hakan. I got my Moderna Vax Monday. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> so. Um, so let's look at it. So now we are down to the messenger RNA itself, the thing that is sitting in the, the lipid nanoparticle and the one that is going to help us make spike protein. What is the structure of that thing? So imagine that this is the beginning of that structure. It is a recipe. So as any recipe, there is a beginning of the recipe and there is an end of the recipe. This red part is actually the recipe itself. This is the spike protein production genetic code. Now, before this, there are some structures. And after this, there are some structures. We got to understand what these are. So first of all, look at this little plate here that I made. This is called a start codon. A codon means three nucleotides. And a nucleotide is, you can think of that as a brick that makes RNA or DNA. So three bricks together make one amino acids code. So that is what is a codon. So le let me give you actually an example to make it even more concrete. Um, so I have a table here. Here. So if you look at this table, imagine that this is this U is a nucleotide. C is a nucleotide, A is a nucleotide, and G is a nucleotide. So, right, so these are uracil, cytosine, adenine, guanine. And now, three of them, when they are put together, imagine these are bricks. So, when three of them put together, that makes one word. And that one word is one protein, peptide, one amino acid. For example, when uracil, uracil, uracil is written in the recipe, then it means for the chef to use phenylalanine amino acid in that part of the cooking. 
or when there is for example cytosine and then uracil uracil then that makes leucine and so on so three of these nucleotides when they are sitting together they are called a codon and they represent a three letter word which is for one amino acid these amino acids are then put together in a chain to make a protein in our example they are making spike protein so back here this red part in the center is a combination of these codons to make amino acids the spike protein has about 1273 amino acids in it that means 1273 multiplied with 3 is the number of nucleotides present in it it doesn't matter it's not an important math to keep in mind except 1273 amino acids now before this recipe there is a three letter codon which tells our enzymes that start from here that three letters is usually a u g these three um, nucleotides are usually a u g i remember it from august we start in august for every recipe and this is called a start codon the ending part when a recipe finishes we have to put one more codon there so that when the chef is cooking the protein and it reaches the stop codon it stops there and does not continue to read on and try to put other things this is just like a recipe book that if there is one recipe let's say for making fried chicken on one page and the other page is fried lamb you don't want to continue from fried chicken into fried lamb and make them together you want to stop where the fried chicken would end so that stop codon there are actually more than uh, one types so i have just written one over here uag it kind of is august's reverse so between the start and stop codon whatever is present in the genetic material that is the actual recipe now before that if you see this little trolley here this little platform here this is called five untranslated region again this is also some genetic material but it this material is not used to cook anything you can think of this as the binding of the recipe you can think of this as the cover page of the recipe and then the back page of the recipe on the other end the benefit of these 5 utr or 3 utr on this side is that on these platforms various enzymes which are machines they will sit on them and work on the recipe so these are the platforms for enzymes to sit down and function with this uh with this messenger rna is it's a beautiful mechanism and uh 5 utr side normally has anywhere from 100 to 1000 codons in it or sorry nucleotides in it so 100 to 100, 1000 or more nucleotides on the other side of the recipe the other side of the binder there is a 3 utr or 3 untranslated region and that usually has about 800 nucleotides in it again this is not a part of the recipe this is just a cover for the book and here again there are various enzymes that will stand on this platform and function to help translate this uh, messenger rna translation means reading the messenger rna rna's genetic code and making some protein now if you see further here i have made a cap so when the messenger rna is brought in the cytoplasm we have vigorous monsters that live in cytoplasm plasm they're really scary monsters they are called ribonucleases and whenever remember we talked about it whenever there is an ase at the end that means it is an enzyme and most of the enzymes are monsters they they kill something or they make something so here we put a cap on this structure in the beginning and would we put another cap on this structure in the end these things are to package this thing the rna and protect that from ribonucleases or the monsters that are going to kill this rna our cells are very strict about things they don't like any foreign thing in there 
So what they would do is if they see some messenger RNA in them, they're going to just attack it. The ribonucleases, the monsters are going to attack it and destroy it. We call that decay or we call that digestion or we call that turnover of the material. Now think about it this way. If messenger RNAs could not be decayed or digested, then our cells would continuously become bigger and bigger bags of this trash. Messenger RNA is nothing but a message to ribosome to make a protein. Once that protein is made, that recipe is not needed. But imagine if you are daily making some food and every time you make food, there is a recipe that is given to you, new recipe, even if you're making the same food. The recipe book would always be new for you. So imagine if every day you make a recipe and the book is given every time, then your kitchen will be filled with books and we cannot have that. So the cell actually destroys the messenger RNA as soon as it is used up to do its to do the cooking. So the messenger RNA that is new and shiny, that is not yet used for cooking, it is packaged in a way to dis to prohibit the monsters, the ribonucleases from destroying this. So this cap here, the function of the cap is to prevent destruction and decay of the messenger RNA. Similarly, this uh, poly A binding protein, I'll go to that side and explain that a little more. That little cap on the tail side of the messenger RNA is also to prevent the decay of the messenger RNA. We want the chef to cook something from this before this thing is destroyed. And then finally, if you see this little uh, monster here, this is a cap binding complex. The messenger RNA in our cytoplasm, in our cell, need to be hauled around. If it is coming from the nucleus, which is not the case in spike protein here, if it is coming out of a nucleus and some, something need to drag it out and bring it to a ribosome. So we have a small tractor in our cells. That tractor complex is called cap binding complex. This cap binding complex will hold on to the cap and then drag this messenger RNA and bring it to the ribosome. Our cell are so sophisticated in their function. It almost is a, um, it is like looking down upon our cells when we doubt that they will not be able to do their function correctly. They become sad when they hear that vaccine would live on forever because they know how they're gonna control everything. So this thing over here is nothing but that would drag the messenger RNA, RNA to the ribosome, then it would separate from it. Now on this side, the tail side, if you see, there is this tail like a little monster or dragon here. This tail is called a poly A tail, poly A tail. What is that? It is a lot of adenine. What are adenine? Adenines are also the nucleotides, those tiny bricks. So we have up to 250, 250 poly A components or many adenines, 250 adenine bricks are laid together to make this poly A tail. We call it A poly, poly means many, A means adenine. Poly A tail, it is a tail that is made of, of many adenines. And then at the end of the poly A tail, we bind, we package that as well to protect it from the monsters who are gonna try to eat it by putting a poly A binding protein or PBR, or poly A binding protein PBP, something like that. So this is the structure of the RNA. Inside the recipe, then start and stop for the recipe, then two platforms on the side of it, then a cap on the head side and a tail on the tail side, and then packaging on top of it, cap is a packaging as well, Tape ha tail has a little cap as well, and then a dragging monster that is gonna haul this RNA inside the cell. Good? So now, let's see what happens. How does the function happen? So if you look at this diagram, the whole RNA is the same. The difference here is, if you see here, these are the two ribosomes attached to it. N RNA can have hundreds of ribosomes attached to it at the same time and make proteins from it. That is like if you put the recipe somewhere and there are 10 chefs that are all looking at that recipe and on their own stoves making and cooking stuff. 
So here I just made two of them. Usually many more ribosomes will get attached with this messenger RNA and they would start making proteins from it. They would read it and make proteins. Now, what are they going to make in case of the vaccine? They are going to make this spike protein. And for spike protein, this is the data. Spike protein has 1,273 amino acids. And the ribosome, these chef, they cook six amino acids each second. So they would cook one spike protein in about four minutes. So if there are two ribosomes attached to the messenger RNA together, then in four minutes, they will make two spike proteins. Now we know that our cell can have up to how many? 10 million. Remember, we talked about it in the beginning. 10 million ribosomes. Imagine if they were all making spike proteins, which is not possible. They would be working on other parts of the cell protein make making as well. But let's say they're all doing it. 10 million ribosome, if they all picked up the same messenger RNA that came in through the vaccine and they are making the spike protein, then within four minutes, they will make 150 million spike proteins, right? So that is what's going to happen. So 10 million ribosome, each ribosome is making one spike protein. So within four minutes, they'll make 10 million spike proteins, not 150 million. Now compare that to the virus. When virus arrives, it does the same thing. The viral RNA is going to do the same thing. But when the viral RNA would go through the ribosomes, there will be 10 million new viruses made every second. They are going to get out of the cell, go to the next cell, enter that cell, and get them made again. And the next cell is going to make another 10 million in the next four minutes. And then those are going to come out and go to the next cell. And they are going to make 10 million copies of the virus. And that, in the case of vaccine, that is not going to happen. Spike protein cannot get out. This messenger RNA cannot get out. So we're going to see what happens to it. So hope so far it is clear that the vaccine, the messenger RNA arrived in our cell. The messenger RNA is used to make spike proteins. Those spike proteins will then be shredded and those pieces are presented outside to activate the immune system. Now what will happen to this messenger RNA? And now let's think about it for a second. Imagine that we have one cell, just one cell, 10 million ribosomes in it. And let's say it continues to make these spike proteins for one hour. Normally, the immune system would continue to function for a couple of days. That means that the cell may be making spike proteins for a couple of days. So every four minutes, there will be 10 million spike proteins. It is possible that 10th minute or 20th mi minute, the cell is destroyed by the immune system to say, man, you are showing things that are not right. So we're going to kill you. So it may not be that the cell would survive for two days, but every four minutes, it may at most make 10 million spike proteins. That still is nowhere near how SARS-CoV-2 infection itself would do. Okay, so now is the time that the messenger RNA has been used to make spike proteins. What do we do with this thing now? What happens is once it is used, it is marked for destruction. And there are some messenger RNAs that are marked for destruction quickly. There are some that are marked for destruction over days. That depends what kind of function our body wants from them. For example, if there is a steroid, uh, let's say adrenaline. Adrenaline is a very fast acting hormone, right? So that when it comes into our cells and it makes this messenger RNA and adrenaline is formed, that messenger RNA is destroyed very fast because we don't want a very long production of long duration of production of adrenaline. On the other hand, if you're going to make, let's say, thyroid hormone or some protein which is going to be part of the cell structure, we may need to have that messenger RNA around for days. So it could be the life of a messenger RNA can be from minutes to days. So what will happen what, within minutes to days? In, in case of the vaccine, I believe it is not going to be more than two days because after two days that the feeling of pain and those things at the site of injection go away. 
So I believe that the messenger RNA's life is lesser than that. Now, how does the messenger RNA decay? This is your answer for will it live forever? It's not going to live forever. Number one, the cell is going to be destroyed. Number two, the messenger RNA itself is going to be destroyed. So let's see what happens. Start from here. First of all, this cap binding complex separated from the messenger RNA. This little monster, the dragging the tractor is separated and said, all right, you can go back and do other things. Then the cap has become alone and available. Similarly, on the tail end, the poly A binding protein, this little red thing is separated as well. So the protections on the messenger RNA that prevented it from getting destroyed by the monsters, those protections are removed. As soon as that happens, this messenger RNA, there is, a now, there is now open season for this messenger RNA. Our monsters inside the cell are told, ribonucleases are told to go ahead and destroy this messenger RNA. This might happen within a few minutes, up to a day. So look at this side again, uh, the starting side. If you see here, the cap has been removed as well. First, we had removed the tractor, and now we are removing the cap as well. So there is a specific ribonuclease. It is also called an exonuclease. It is also called a decapper. Its function is to remove the cap. Imagine if you are wearing, wearing a cap and walking around, and somebody comes and takes the cap off or the hat off. So that is a decapper. So this monster comes in. What it does is it takes the, the cap and removes it. Once the cap is removed, this platform becomes totally naked and is available to exonucleases to start biting into it and start destroying it. So first we removed the cap binding protein. Then we removed the cap itself by decapping through the decapper, which is an exonuclease or ribonuclease. And then we have another enzyme called exonuclease that is now chewing away at the platform. The decay has started, the digestion has started. Now the, the reason exonuclease, there are two type of nucleases. Nucleases mean enzymes that can break down DNA and RNA. There are two types. One that are called exo. Exo can only destroy a nuclear material from their ends. So if my if you look at my hand here, imagine that this pen that I'm holding, let me hold a white colored pen. So imagine if this, this pen I'm holding is an RNA, then if you chew at it from the beginning, the ends of it, then it is called exonuclease activity. If you chew from the middle of it, then it is called endonuclease activity. So if you see here, we are chewing at it from the side, so that is an exonuclease activity, and that is going to start destroying from outside towards inside the, the RNA. Similarly, if you see here, the poly A tail, just like we have a decapper that would take the cap off, we have a detailer as well that would take the tail off. So the poly A binding protein is removed and then deadenylate poly A um, ribonuclease. So why deadenylate? Remember, poly A tail is nothing but adenylate amino acids or nucleotides that are sitting in, in a chain, 250 of them. So removing them will mean deadenylation. So deadenylate enzyme is going to start taking away those A's, the adenylates, uh, adenylates from the tail, and they are going to start shortening this tail as well. Once the tail is removed, then more exonuclears are going to come in and start destroying this messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA would be destroyed within a few minutes. So can it hang around in, around in the cell and make the spike proteins forever? No, it cannot. Then, now if you look at it, the continuous decay and digestion of this messenger RNA. This is one exonuclease that is destroying this end, the three end. The, the uh, RNA has two ends. One is called a five prime and the other one is called a three prime. Imagine five prime is the beginning of the recipe and the three prime is the end side of the recipe. So there is an exonuclease that is chewing away at the three prime end. 
And there is another exonuclease that is chewing away at the five prime end. And they are just going to meet in the middle. And by that time, the, the RNA is destroyed. Then it is also possible that sometimes the beginning or the end is not chewed away. Instead, there are endonucleases that would start chewing away from the middle of the RNA and split it into two pieces. And then those two pieces are going to be chewed away by exonucleases. So there are so many enzymes that are just going to attack this mRNA and destroy it. And if, this is my last part of the discussion here, if this gap was not present and this tail, actually I should go one more. If this gap was not present and if this tail did not have this gap on the tail as well, then this messenger RNA doesn't even have a chance to reach the ribosome to get itself translated or cooked. It would have been destroyed even before that. And if for some reason this messenger RNA somehow leaks out of the cell, for example, the cell got destroyed by the immune system, it opened up, the messenger RNA spilled out, there are ribonucleases, exonucleases, endonucleases sitting in the tissue and they're going to start destroying them. Our body, you can actually think about it this way. If we were not able to destroy and remove such debris, then our body would just keep growing like trash bags for continuous production of this trash and staying of that trash in our body forever. Imagine we'll become tons bigger, but our body very, very quickly digests and decays and destroys them. Then these things are either recycled and used up to make something else or they are thrown out in fecal matter or in the urine and we take we get rid of them so this is how the um, the messenger rna is destroyed so a few things if i review it number 1 about 10 million ribosomes in one cell i do not know how many cells here in the deltoid muscle so maybe when the vaccines are given, maybe uh, 10 million cells are recruited. Every one cell can make up to 10 million spike proteins every four minutes. That is the speed of production, six amino acids per second. And there are 1,273 amino acids in the spike protein. Meanwhile, when a messenger RNA is brought in, it is capped from its both ends so that our monster enzymes do not destroy it. It is used up by the ribosome. We cook the spike proteins, then the caps are removed. And that means the messenger RNA is now available for destruction. And the exonucleases, endonucleases, decappers, deadenylate enzymes, they all attack this thing and they just destroy it. So that is what happens, I hope that this answers this question. And it was it was a worry for some folks as well that the, the vaccine would stay in us and destroy us or keep producing this forever. So this is the discussion. I hope you're doing good. Um, any, let's just look at quick comments, questions, and then we'll break. So Rishki San says, hats off to Dr. Bean and Mrs. Bean for excellent illustrations. Well, thank you. So lying guy says, if you can die with the virus and it counts, you can die with the vaccine and it counts. So if we are counting, then yes, but hopefully <clears throat> not many deaths with vaccine. So lying guys says, did he cover the deaths in the vaccine yet? Uh, lying guys, are you uh, addressing me? I haven't yet looked at the deaths from the vaccine. I can look at that and talk about it. TD says, Dr. Bean checks every box there. Thank you very much. Margaret McInnes says, yes, he is. He is, Dave. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> so Wayne says, Dr. Bean's lectures have been convinced that my ex-wife was a spike protein in her previous life. <laughs> that is a cool one. Uh, yes, hungry, hungry hippos. They are just sitting in there and they want to eat the RNAs. Our, our environment inside the cell is very strictly controlled. We uh, Just like in our uh, world, the roads that we make and they stay there, our cells do not even allow a road to be there forever. We, If we have to transport something from point A to B in the cell, we will make a road, we'll have some proteins then carry the thing from point A to B, and then we would remove that road. So it is so tightly controlled system. <laughs> Dave says, wow, take me my money, Mr. Bean. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. So talking about the money, um, Dr. Bean should make cartoons. His diagrams are fantastic. Thank you. I actually think about first what is a the concept, then think about what can I make that would kind of stay a little more permanent in your memory, and then I make them. <clears throat> Sanjeev says it is a bit difficult to. I hope, Sanjeev, uh, if you can watch it once more, it would help even more. Um, Arun says, can cap differential between our mRNA and foreign mRNA, but great analogy. I wish you were there at my genetic class. I request you to be a bit slow. Okay, so sorry, I did I go that fast. Um, yeah, so the cap, the vaccine manufacturers have to figure out that what kind of a cap they are going to attach. So the cap is the same. Cap's function is to kind of keep the messenger RNA protected. Sorry, Arun, if I was fast, if you can watch it again. Dr. Bean is the amazing teacher like my medical school. Thank you. Um, cool. So uh, this is where we are at for today. Uh, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. If you would like to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. I always smile at the idea of coffee. So there's a link in the description for coffees, and there is another link in the description if you wanted to support my work, if you like it. And at the end of the day, once again, please like, subscribe, and share. Please stay strong. We have just a few more months. If you are convinced for vaccine, you would get that. If you're not convinced, there is no push from here. But stay strong. Keep your guard up. Don't give up. Don't become nervous. Don't become anxious. And we will get there. So we have now reached 251 videos. Today is 252. I never thought we'll do so many discussions about the this virus. So thank you very much for everybody's time. Thank you for staying with me during this journey. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.